Welcome to the Tommy Sandu podcast. It's actually a Sunday morning right now. So, um, and I need, I need to say that because that is reflective of the conversation that I'm about to have with Sarpreet Singh. Sarpreet Singh, originally from New Zealand, uh, now living in Germany, where he was signed uh, to Bayern Munich to play football at a very young age. He's now on loan to another club, uh, but still with Bayern as well. This guy is one of what? handful of Desi players from uh, Indian background, Indian origins, who are playing football at a top level. You know I had to get him on. You know I need to celebrate that. We love celebrating successes and people paving new paths for themselves and also for future generations. And this little young kid is taking that all onto his shoulders. He's um, absolutely smashing it. I'm super proud of him. And uh, here is our chat with the up-and-coming talent, and football star that is Sarpreet Singh. Sarpreet Singh, welcome to the Tommy Sandu podcast, brother. How are you? I'm good, there. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. Where, where are you right now? I can see you chilling up against like a brick. I don't know if you're in a box. Is this how footballers live? Where are you right now? Uh, it's just my my apartment. So it's a um, backdrop, is it? So. No, it's all right. You know, so look, look, I, I do like a I do like a brick wall. I've got one in my house as well. I'm at the in-laws right now. Now, you don't know oh, what that right. means. You don't know what I mean, Sarpri, because you're not mad, right? You're a young man. Look how happy you look. Like right? you ain't got you got a full head of hair, you got hair on your face, you got black, full black hair everywhere. It's it's a beautiful thing. I'm looking at you and I'm like, it's like another world right now for me. Um, I like to see photos of 20 years ago then. Right. But I, even then, it was a goatee then. You see, so I, was, I went with a thin line. You've gone with like the thick goatee beard. Mm-hmm. Are the kids not doing that now? shaping your goatee into a little thing nah not for me i think i like this do you not think it looks okay like this i, I think it's very okay because also you're proper baby face you are like yeah i know I, if i shave it it's proper yeah if you see pictures like, of you without a beard from like a little while ago you look about 12. yeah i know that's why i've just been like i'm 22 now so no longer like a 17 year old you know so i had to grow the beard so but i think like one day maybe i'll get rid of it again 26 or something see how it looks bring the face back what well, see then it's okay then you can then you can be a baby face like 26 27 28 year old and that's cool but right now you're like yeah man i've got a beard you know like it's still, yeah. it's still a new thing for you right now you know it's, you gotta you, you gotta you got enjoy it enjoy yeah exactly it's the Embrace next phase it. of my phase of my um appearance I guess so yeah I'm embracing it I like the beard yeah in terms of Punjabi films and stuff to be fair I don't watch many films in in general I'm not really a movie kind of guy whether it comes to English or Punjabi movies or films and things like that I mean every time I'm at my grandparents back home there's a lot of star plus they call it the channel I think it's a lot of um yeah shows that one natik after the other, just my grandma just watches and watches for hours. So we have to watch as well, I guess. I love the fact that even though with all your football success, you're like, oh no, when we go to Daddy Nani's house, we got to watch Star Plus. Even you, you're like, no, nope, you know, there's no no match of the day, no football highlights, no football programs. You've just, she calls rank, the nataks are on in grandma's yeah, house. Yeah, exactly. When grandma, when you're at grandma's, that's the only thing you're watching for sure. <laughs> And um, okay, so I, I don't, I thought actually film culture would be a big part of being a footballer. I thought like, because then when you're not training, you know, what you're going to do. I know you guys now, the discipline and what's involved, there's no going out. There's no partying. It's not like it was back in the 80s and 90s with footballers. There's so much pressure on all the time and rest, recovery, all that stuff. I thought actually movie time and gaming would be all you did do. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, in terms of that, if I find a nice series on Netflix, then um, yeah, I will try and watch it. I'll get through it. Like if I get hooked on something, then for sure I enjoy it. But I'm quite specific when it comes to this um, movies or like action films and things like that. But yeah, like you said, I think our lifestyle is quite different. Although we do have a lot of spare time, I think a lot of the time is yeah going into recovery and, and things like that. So like obviously I train um, yeah in the mornings and then take an afternoon nap and then I tend to go to the gym in the, in the evening as well and then in between that you have to cook for yourself 
and things like that. So I think time generally, like you have a routine and it just goes by. Um, but apart oh, from wait, that, I, I do game I'll, a bit. Granddad, granddad, afternoon nap. What's going on there? What's it? Have to, have to. It's it's essential. I mean, I can't function the whole day without my naps. And to be fair, my naps are meant to be forty five minutes, but end up being about two and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> and you wake up more tired and you're like, what have I done here? But, See, I've uh, heard that. A, P a PT friend of mine once said, 40 minute naps is the one, 40, 45 minute naps. That's because if you're training in the morning, as you probably are then, and it's quite intense, yeah. you need that little bit of time. But you can't wake up after 40 minutes. It takes like 15, 20 minutes to get into the sleep. And then you're right. Then you wake up two hours later, you're like, oh. <laughs> it's a bit happened? deeper than I would have liked. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like you said, 40 minutes is tough, though. I mean, it takes about 20 to get to sleep. So, yeah, it's, <laughs> I have to and give myself room in the, in the alarm, I guess. And when you have a nap, do you like, do you, will you go like change and get into like full like pajamary or shorts or relaxed wear and get the gumball and the duvet and get all probably, or is it like a, no, I'll just nap on the sofa kind of thing? Yeah, I always nap on the sofa. I mean, my gumball is right there on the sofa already prepared for my afternoon nap but um yeah I just tend to come home from training have my lunch and then just chill on my phone a bit and then take a nap or a sleep <laughs> okay, a little mini one what are you watching well you said Netflix and stuff what, what, what's your what's your series go-to thing at the moment to be fair I don't have anything that I'm vibing at the moment I haven't really had a good look in a wee while um Squid Game was the one that I last watched um, I watched the whole Squid Game series. Did you enjoy that? Uh, yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was really good. I enjoyed it. I mean, I've watched Prison Break about three three times probably, so I quite like watching Prison Break just after a few years, just watch it over again. Um, but, yeah, then I tend to be fair, I tend to go on YouTube quite a bit, just videos um, on YouTube is where I kill quite a lot of time, actually. Do you, do, you, do you watch other footballers? Do you watch, do you kind of, you know, like, because obviously, like, you know, kids, nephews of mine who are all into football will watch clips of great goals and great bits of skill. And that just kind of goes around, um, being sent around as well. Do you do that as well? Is that, as a fellow footballer, do you kind of check out what other people are kind of doing, how they're playing? Yeah, for sure. I, um, obviously, the weekends here are good. I mean, when I was in New Zealand as a kid and we'd watch football in Europe, the time zone's opposite. So every time... 3 a.m. you have to wake up to watch a football game or 5 a.m. or something to, to watch a game. So the perk of being in Europe and actually for one playing football as well, but like you can catch up with the whole weekend's game. So I tend to, yeah, I do tend to try and watch football so I can obviously learn off the best, I think. Um, there's still a long way to go for me in my career. So I watch a lot of videos of, um, yeah, football, but I also just, yeah, random videos. I just try and learn things around life and, also football, I think. Football's important, but I think just learning little motivational things and, and things like that is what I try and pick up on. See, that's mad for me because you imagine, like, I'm, I'm a generation older than you now. So at 22, we weren't too hot on motivational stuff or kind of the head game, the mental space and how, that, how much that plays a part in everything anyone does on any level. But this is something your generation, you guys are big into. So, you know, how, how do you, what are you watching? Or what are you just doing? What do you feel helps you in that way? Because the physicality is a physicality. The training is a training. You go there, you've got coaches. What's keeping all that grounded and in check for you, all, all your, all your headspace stuff? Yeah, I think it's just like learning off other people, how they speak. Um, you, I tend to try and watch like interviews and it's not only footballers. I watch singers as well, for example, like, yeah, Karen Oshla as well, things like that. Like I watched the interviews. It's like, I think you can relate from a lot of things about how, how like you became who you are, you know? It's not something that just happens overnight. Like it takes a lot of hard work. And I think a lot of people don't actually see the process and the things you have to do day in, day out. I think a lot of people just see the, the high side of it and things like that. So like you said, the mental side of the game is, um, is very important because... Yeah, you find sometimes if you're not performing well, then nobody wants to know about you or anything like that. And then when you're going well, I think everyone wants to be your friend, you know. So I think, 
yeah, I try and learn as much as I can from others. And yeah, just for myself, really, I think it's about just believing in yourself and trusting your process, I think is, is very important. Like I know what I do every single day. Um, and for me, I think as long as that, I know it'll come out on the other side, like come out on the good side. So for me, yeah. it's just trusting the process for, for myself. Exactly. Like who keeps, who keeps Sabpreet's belief? Like, you know, we can all a rubbish training session or maybe even a rubbish game day so yeah for sure i think i think every little thing helps you know when you have a coach that supports you i think for, for someone like me is, is quite important because yeah the way i play as well sometimes yeah you can of course as an attacker you're going to lose the ball but i think if the coach has trust in you that more often than not you're going to find the right pass or find the ball that delivers a goal you know then i think it does give you a lot of confidence i think yeah these things help um, the structure of the team and, and things like that but I think the older you get you to realize that it's going to come from yourself you know like of course you got support from family they're always supporting you but I think as long as you know you're putting in the work then I'm sure that at the end of it, like good things will come to you um, so for me like it's just yeah I just I, I believe in myself you know I think I've yeah my career so far has been like this you know it's had some very highs and also had some lows and I think the older you get you start to realize how to handle situation and how to live your life as a professional footballer yeah man yeah and and I, I was watching some of your highlight stuff and um it's it's great you know I, th I actually think this so sweet about when a ball just goes through somehow finds a, a line through three or four people and it just lands at the feet what's that feel like because that's that's effectively your job that, that attacking midfielder to kind of take forward and to kind of deliver that off hold your ground I thought that's that's the Punjabi in you by the way that kind of you know, ooh, it takes a few knots here and they go don't worry that's how we're built man and then yeah. and then deliver that that's, just tell me about the feeling when you're on a pitch and you, you know you've just set someone up like that that's it's got like you're king yeah for sure I mean yeah it's an amazing feeling of course um but I guess it comes under your job description as well you know like when I'm an attacker I have to create goals score goals so that's that's my job you know and I try to do that to the best of my ability so I think yeah for me if I can entertain people as well make people happy and make people proud of me I think it's such a big thing um like you said there's not so many footballers or Punjabi footballers um in the world um but I think if I can help to to bring the next ones through I think it'll be quite a quite an amazing thing for me and it's something I pride on and I hope that um, through my performances and through my career people can people can take um, inspiration from it so you know I work hard every single day so I can um, to try and help maybe create a platform for other, others to follow in on. yeah I, I agree and I shall talk I, you know various people from acting comedy or whatever or you know film and music and as you say it's as simple as and a lot of them believe it it's as simple as if you see a brown face doing something as a kid, you will naturally, it just goes in. I can now do that. And that's why I'm so chuffed that you're doing what you're doing, because I'm like, we need more people on your level, what you're doing. But let us let me take you back to um, to, to life in in South Auckland, right? That's that's where, you know, it's where, it's where you were. So, well, firstly, how long has it been since you lived there? How long have you been away from home? I've been away from home now six years. So I left when I was 16. God, man, that's hard. Like, that's, so you've been, like, effectively on your own, in a way. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I'm sure people you visited and people visit you and things like that. But you've been on your own from, from a teenage year. That, does that make you tougher? Or is, is that, or is that really tough on you? No, I think it makes me tougher, you know. I think that's what helps me to, to be how I am today and all these mental things, having to learn things for yourself. I think step-by-step, step, you know, at 16, I, so obviously I'm from South Auckland then I got an opportunity to move down to Wellington, which is still in New Zealand, but it's, it's about an hour and a half flight from home. So like, it's not like your family comes see you every week or something. And it still takes a bit of time to, to get there. And Leaving home's not easy, I think, especially in our culture as well. I think 
um, parents don't naturally like their kids leaving home so early. And as a kid as well, it's, it's difficult to leave home. But um, yeah, if you have a dream and it's something you want to achieve, then sometimes in life, I think you have to make sacrifices, you know, and yeah, I think everyone makes sacrifices. I've made a lot of sacrifices to, to be where I am today. Um, but it's all part of my journey. I, so I went down to Wellington, which was in New Zealand, but still away from home. So in that aspect was a bit easier rather than changing to a whole new country. I was still familiar with the country. And in Wellington, I got looked after quite well um, with the club and, and things like that. And I think just being away from home for those three years sort of set me up to move to Europe, which was the next step because it was away from home, but I still had family close by, you know. But then after that, I fully made the move over to, to Munich, which was also crazy going straight from Wellington to, to Bayern, which was yeah, a pretty crazy story. Um, and how, how, how does that come about? So is that just a coach? Is that just a kind of you got spotted you fit because also it's so technical it's finding the right midfielder attacker or whatever that fits the squad and it's like you know it's like a chessboard so you know what was it that 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 created that brilliant move for you i was playing for new zealand at the under 20 world cup in poland um and that's sort of where it all came about i think they were watching watching the games and they were quite impressed with how I was playing and obviously it's Bayern you know they have the choice of the whole world so for me it was quite a nice surprise and like yeah it made me so happy obviously being from New Zealand realizing that a club of this caliber wants you you know and yeah. I was on holiday when they when my agent phoned me and he said um Bayern wants you and I was just sitting at the beach and I had a hot dog and some ice cream and I was like oh I really got to pull myself together now here because I thought I had a long preseason because I was meant to go back to Wellington. So the preseason is quite long. So you have time to, to build everything up. And then I got a phone call and they basically said, yeah, next week to, to buy. And then the rest is history. You know, there's no saying no to that. But they, you know, you're there with Lewandowski. You're there with like people that are already in the Hall of Fame of football for the rest of their life. And that, that you know, but again, I feel I just feel like what what must your family be thinking? What would you like your, the nearest thing? Because I'm so proud, and we're not related, you know. I'm, yeah, and I've yeah. just stood, I've just stood with you like talking about Son and Bajwa and Ami Verk and Gadon Ojla, <laughs> and I'm proud of you. So, yeah. like your boys at home, your family, your mum, you know, what does she say? No, I mean, like, you know, of course, I think my family is immensely proud of me. Um, but I think my mum, you know. Since I was a young kid, she put in a lot of effort for me, taking me trainings, academies, individual trainings and things like that. So I think for her, of course, she's really proud of me every day, but she knows that I'm capable of, of achieving great things, you know, if I put my mind to it. So for her, it's also keeping me aligned and keeping me focused, you know, I think now as the years go by, other things come in life and your life is always changing, you know, so I think it's she keeps, she's very good at keeping me focused on what I need to do, um, which I'm very grateful for, but I know she's very proud of me. And I hope with Corona and stuff passing by, um, my family can come over, you know, it's been, they came when I first arrived in Germany, but it's been two and a half years since they've um, been to Europe, you know, so uh, hopefully. You've, no, you I have what I'm saying. You've not like, you've not hugged your mom and dad in two, two and a bit years in? No, 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 I have. I was home in summer, but in terms of them coming over to actually see me play and things like that, um, they haven't, but I was home um, Christmas, oh, not Christmas, in May, um, just gone. So yeah. like five months ago, I was home. So it was really nice. Um, and, and when you're back home, are you, cause obviously you're not 16 anymore. And I always remember that when I went to university, and you come back from uni um, at 21, your parents still think you're 18. The, when you left, you were, so are you straight back to being 16 at home? Yeah, yeah. I'm also I'm the, the baby of the family, you know, so I've always been treated like that. So every time I go home, I'm just, yeah, I get looked after really well, you know, so I can't <laughs> just, like, everything is, I think mum's always so happy, you know, like my sister tells me mum's, been setting up the house, like having everything prepared, like for when I'm landing, you know, it's typical mum things, but um, no, it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, but yeah, what I hope. You, what have you got brother sister wise? 
Uh, one brother and one sister. And obviously, and both older. Both so, older. It, 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 uh, do you, would you do like an underwater pronto? Would you do like a, a big, like, you show lepatore and all that stuff? Or are you like, no, mum, I've got to have a uh, grilled chicken and asparagus. No, no, no. We're, yeah, I try and keep it balanced, but meke are my favorite. Um, meke prote. Um, well, they hit different. Like I can, I can eat them all day. And I think when I got home, I had like six or seven. I was like, that's not good for me. <laughs> and they always tell you it's okay, it's good for you. You know, they say um, you get stronger by eating roti and things like that. So <laughs> you're like, I, I, you're like, listen, I already napped for two and a half hours. This is gonna wipe me out all day if they have <laughs> five, six minutes. Med- med- it's like a pronto coma you slip into. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I gotta know, make the product with a bit of yogurt, or do you go with a bit of a chard, a pickle on the side? What, what, what's, yeah, what's yeah, the both, both. Mehi and um, a bit of a chard as well. Sometimes I like them without a chard, but if it's plain brotto, then with a chard and mehi. But otherwise, um, yeah, because I was in I to do isolation in hotels, you know, and so right. mum would like pack it all up, send it to me, and then I just put it there. I mean, you can't get better service than that, really. Uh- I love it. I, I, the thought of you trying to land land back in Germany. They go, sir, what is this silver package in your case? Oh, that's, yeah. that's 35 mete pronte that my, um, <laughs> my mum gave me to take back. Um, yeah, this is brilliant. And, and what's the German like now? Where, where's, where's your you know, your German skills? You, you getting it? Yeah, it's good. You can speak on that. Ein bisschen. Ich habe, ein bisschen. Ich habe Deutsch in school gelernt. Ah, so super. It's, That's what like, I've got. That sounds ish. Ish can, yeah, ish can. Oh, okay. I can speak okay. Um, ish can, okay. Bro, don't even try that. Ish can, ish. good as Deutsch, Faden. <laughs> no, I, I'm sure you do. And, and, but so when you're on the training, is training done in German? Like uh, when they're on the pitch, when, when, where, you are, where you are now at um, Ragensburg, um, is that, are the coaches all speaking in German? or Because you must have players from all over the place. Yeah, um, yeah, of course, the, the, everything's done in German. Um, there's a lot of English-speaking boys or even the coaches and stuff, they understand enough English. But um, I think in Germany, it's quite a big thing. Of course, I, as it should be, I think, if you're in Germany, you speak German, you know. Um, you don't come here and try and speak foreign. Obviously, if you can't say something or you need help, um, we speak English. But meetings, trainings, everything is in German. And I've been here two and a half years now so and when it's football I think you learn football language first as well so I've picked up on um most of the football football language so um yeah I don't have many problems with that so so how does it work now I, and I don't understand the game well enough to know so like so you, obviously you're on loan now with Ragensburg Re- Regen am I saying it right Regensburg Regensburg yeah, Reg- Regensburg. Regensburg you're alone <laughs> there for a bit what's the plan or do you have a plan or is it like a it's not really in my hands. All I've got to do is smash each training session, smash each game, and it, it becomes a plan of other people. I mean, I how, how does it work? Yeah, I think, um, obviously, I have a contract until 2023 back at Bayern. Um, so I'm on loan for this year, and the goal for this year is to, yeah, smash it, get as many goals, get as many assists, play as much as possible, you know, that for me is the most important thing to have game time and play as much as possible. And then after this year, yeah, I'm not sure. I think come closer towards the end of the season, there'll be talks with, with Bayern and, and what the plan is and what the future is, you know, um, if they see me, if they see me having a chance with the first team next year, then I'm there. If they think it's better for me to get more game elsewhere for another year, it's like that. Yeah, there's lots of options, you know. I think for me, it's not something I stress over, you know. I think I've had it I've, so far, it's been a good season. Um, and if I keep going like this, um, there'll be plenty of options. And yeah, who knows what the future holds, but for me, it's see. See, it's funny. At the moment, I'm reading Will Smith's new book. I'm um, only about three chapters in. It came out this week. And funny, you just sat in front of a brick wall because he talks about building a brick wall at the, um, at the start of the book. And, and he says that his dad told, told him and his brother to build this wall. And he made them mix the concrete and then the cement and all that. And basically, it took him a year. It was a ridiculous method and all that. But the message was, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the message was, 
if you told Will Smith to build a brick wall, he go, there would be no, no way I could do it. But if you told me just how to lay a brick, I could do one brick at a time, you know? Mm. That, and that's, I think that's you right now, that you can think about, you know, Bayern and this and representing countries, whatever, and tournaments and that. But actually, your brick is tomorrow's training session. Your yeah. brick is just the nap this afternoon. Mm -hmm. I mean, so you've got to, I don't know how you manage that. At 22, man, I didn't have a clue. I was a DJ at 22, bumming <laughs> around in club, chasing girls. And like, so, and I think the pressure on you to kind of have that awareness, have that mental awareness. I don't know, I kind of feel like it's it's unfair in a way, because I'm like, oh no, I want this little butter to enjoy the game. So I, I guess what I'm saying is, is that, does that work? Do you, can you look at it like that, just like brick by brick, I'm trying to build my wall. And then you can look back on it in, in five years and go, oh man, like Will Smith said, he goes, I'm a movie star. I'm a Grammy award winning thing. He goes, but I didn't set out for that. I set out laying bricks. Does that makes sense? Yeah. yeah, no, it does make sense. And I think you've, you've nailed it there perfectly in what you've said, I think. Yeah, the focus is now what you can do now to be better. You know, it's not looking so far ahead of what, what can happen, what might happen. I think after every day happens, you can look back on it and then it can be such an amazing thing, an amazing story, I think. My story so far has been amazing already, um, but I don't look back on it now. I want to get to it. I'm so young, you know, I still have so much to, to give to the game, so much joy to give to people watching, you know, and for me, that's my focus. So whatever, like, but it's not, it's not easy. You know, like you said, there's this pressure, there's expectations, there's, there's so much that comes with it, um, but you have to learn how to handle it. Oh man, listen. You know, I feel proud. I, just, sorry, I know I feel like I feel like I'm your dad all of a sudden. But like, you know, you're a sensible kid who's doing good stuff. You're representing. Um, I, I know how tough it is. And I guess I just wanted to get you on to say, just carry on and just you know, and don't, you know, ficker not, you know, play kulla dulla, as we say, just play with freeness. And actually, get another Will Smith connection because his film's out this week and he's plugging all of that is about King Richard. Have you seen that by any chance? No. That's one for you to watch, bro. King Richard is where he plays Venus and Serena's dad. So okay. it's about him getting there to the game. Did you know that Venus, Richard Williams, their father, had the, the, the vision that he was going to make them tennis players two years before they were born? Two, before they were born, he said to his wife, we're going to have daughters. I'm going to put them through training. I'm going to da, da, da. They're going to be, and they are going to be number one and number two in tennis in the world. Yeah. Now, whether that makes him crazy, whether that makes it a prophecy, whether it makes it, uh, you know, extreme discipline, but it's that belief. And, and he believes his, his daughters so much. And he wanted to just pass that on. But he also said, every training session is enjoy yourself. Venus Serena. Venus Serena Williams, he'd go to it like, enjoy, enjoy the game. And I guess I want you to say to them, like, I think you've got to keep enjoying it. You've got to keep smiling as you play it and then train really hard with it. And I, 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 I want it to happen for you. I think we all do. We're willing it on. So just know that you've got an army yeah, of yeah. fans and support, man. No, I appreciate it. Yeah, but I think that's how it starts, though, with the vision, you know. You see something and then, yeah, like you said, enjoying is the most important thing. The, the day you stop enjoying it is probably not for you as well. So keeping that enjoyment and that hunger as well is, I think, what drives you essentially to, to be better. So for me, yeah, I, I enjoy it. I, I love I love that side of the game as well, you know, when you're doing well and everyone's... Um, yeah, they're taking inspiration from you. So for me, it's amazing. So I just keep, I keep going. I, I enjoy everything that comes my way, good or bad. You learn, you learn one way or the other. So I enjoy it all. Good lad. And I guarantee you, if you join the Premier League, I can sort, I can sort out your stash of Metewale Pronte every Sunday. All right. <laughs> okay. I can get uh, okay. wherever you are, whatever club you decide. Fresh. I want them fresh every every day delivered. Of course. <laughs> Of course, we'd have it no other way. I don't like reheated pronto. Reheated yeah, that's what I mean. That has to be fresh off the got, cover. Yeah, <laughs> off the straight off the where the butter, the butter, the butter starts melting straight away. The butter's like, yeah, yeah. that's when you know. That's yeah, when you know it's gonna hit. This, yeah. It's a Sunday now, and I'm about to crush a cup. I'm got to do a comedy night tonight in Wales. Uh, so before I leave my in-laws, where I'm now, I'm gonna have 
exactly what you're talking about. It's methylated product that is on the menu. It's like your psychic. So I'm not yeah. rubbing it in. I'm not, that <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. I That's the good side. Order me some somewhere. No, <laughs> exactly. You can't actually find it like in restaurants, I guess. It's more like, it's like a house. It's a soul food. It's like from home, you know? It's not, yeah. It yeah. won't hit the same. It's not so. the same. It's not the same. Mm. Listen, look, look, look after yourself. Enjoy your little nap. Train hard and um and let us know when you're in the UK. Come and have a little hangout and a hookup and um and, and let's smash it, bro. We're proud of you, man. Just keep doing what you're doing, all right? No, well do. Thanks for having me. Um, it was really so yeah. I, I look forward to next time. No, it's fine, Safri. Cheers, bro. Cheers. Perfect. Thank you. Cheers. I need you to do one thing for me, and that is to subscribe to the podcast. It's free. Okay, this doesn't cost you any money. You know that you can listen to this for free, uh, whether you are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, if you're on GeoSavan or any other streaming platform, Deezer, CastBox, TuneIn Radio, we're everywhere. Um, if you're listening to this right now, hit subscribe. Uh, subscribers really make a big difference for podcasters like me because it tells us who our family of podcast listeners are, where you are in the world. Uh, the kind of shows that you're listening to and the things that you like. So it really makes a big difference. If you like this, please hit subscribe uh, and then we can keep a little tab on you and give you the good stuff that you deserve. So I really appreciate it. It means a lot to have your company. And if you're watching this on YouTube, then you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button there and be a part of the Tommy Sandu podcast. People, we're only just beginning. The good stuff is all coming your way daily, Monday to Friday. Go spread the word and be a part of what we do. Hit subscribe, follow us on social media and do it right now. Thank you.